yeah hi guys today we are going to discuss about data modeling stages the moment you say data modeling what is the purpose of that model whether that model is meant for supervised learning or it is meant for unsupervised learning or it is meant for reinforcement learning so these are all the three types of learning so far now or modeling you can think of supervised learning model unsupervised learning model reinforcement learning model so when it comes these two models these three models highly we are focusing towards one particular model that is called predictive model what is that predictive modeling something we need to predict unseen data data which is useful for training the or training with a machine learning algorithm so through training certain weights learning parameters are uh, driven by the training component from the training component from the weights and from the learning parameter what we are attempted to we need to test upon that one kind of data set is called test data set other kind of data set is called unseen data set so this is what the combination we are going to try what is predictive modeling whenever the data is labeled labeled data only called as supervised learning supervised learning always related to labeled data for the labeled data only we can do supervised learning supervised learning the moment we say that fall into predictive modeling what is the use of predictive modeling it starts predicting something about the future forecasting it's a type of forecasting so this is the set tone for today's discussion let us move on to the further discussion predictive modeling is the idea behind the supervised learning within the supervised learning only the predictive modeling we can think of doing so within the predictive modeling there are two co component will come one is numerical prediction another one is label prediction or categorical prediction label prediction or else it is called categorical prediction there are two types of prediction plays a role when it is a numerical prediction this is what your dependent variable dependent variable only need to be predicted this is what your prediction this is where you need to work the dependent variable when you are in the position to predict i will give you sample central for this nothing to worry so when you want to predict 23.5 it could be a real number or it could be a whole number 150 anything ultimately you are in the position to predict something numerically that is called numerical prediction then the dependent variable is of the nature called numerical for this what is the model predominantly used is linear regression this is one of the model for the same numerical prediction you can use random forest model you can use knn model you can use for the nay based model you can use support vector machine model so anything is possible predominantly or widely popular model is linear regression as per your syllabus also you are supposed to undergo linear regression next whenever you are in the position to predict a label what is the meaning of label for example category 1 category 2 category 3 or grade a grade b grade c grade or yes or no whether cancer exist or not after scanning your image or uh, analyzing certain uh, parameters upon patient number 1 taking the prediction or taking the decision whether that particular pertaining record says the cause for uh, cancer or the existence of cancer or no yes or no anything like this whenever we are trying to predict a label then it comes into label prediction in the machine learning world label prediction fall into classification classification model or you will be 
going to address in the subsequent unit. Now we are in the unit number two. Unit number three is all about your label prediction, classification models. Again, classification models, there are so many. One more uh, numerical prediction model, uh, most of the people are not aware, but it is important to know. That is called Mars algorithm. Expansion I am not telling, only the abbreviation I am telling. Mars algorithm. When to use Mars algorithm is a fair idea you, should, you all should have. You may have every model, definitely you should have one dependent variable, n independent variable. ID or IV, independent variable IV, dependent variable DV. This is what normally people used to call abbreviation. Independent variable or in plural I am writing. So many IVs or IDs you will have. Only one single dependent variable you will have. If all the independent variables all are of numerical only, please note the point. Understand the emphasis. All, not even single one all should become numerical in nature. For this, one of the best data set available is Wilcoxon breast cancer identification data. It is available in the Wilcoxon breast cancer data set, WBCD. So something, this kind of data set is available in the UCA machine learning repository in which if you, I have published recently one of the paper in the Springer conference on this. If you look at all the independent variables all are of numerical that is image to image to excel or data conversion image data extraction so that uh, position focal length uh, um, perimeter there are so many aspects of that image local uh, image locality or something like that so they themselves converted the image scanned image to this uh, excel data representation or structured data representation from in which the labels are given yes malignant or benign so this one of the data set i can say classic data set it is a popular data set so this data set we can try mars algorithm what mars algorithm says is if all your independent variable are of continuous in nature or numerical in nature immediately this gives a better performance they mean to say if it is mixed type one, one you may have character data type, one you may have numerical data type, one you may have string data type, one you may have integer data type, one you may have time series data, anything. If any combination, one you may have text data, time series and text data, these kind of combination together if you work upon, then you are given the privilege to choose any of the model for the numerical prediction. You can choose linear regression, Random forest, so SVM, not this, SVM, Naibase, KNN, or there are many more algorithms supports numerical prediction. So this is the thumb rule or uh, unheard information I would like to emphasize for you guys. So this is the introduction. So when it comes model building, what are you supposed to do? The data which you are expecting always not going to be perfect in nature always whenever the data you pull out from the real time scenario or when you pull out from the internet or you may get a primary data also or you may get a secondary data which is already deposited in the um, uh, platforms uh, data repository platforms whatsoever may be the method you approach what is the main thing in the world data science world says is 70% of the time you should be good enough or strong enough towards data cleaning, data pre-processing, data transformation. There are three steps, data cleaning, data pre-processing, data transformation. Although it looks like same more or less, there is a subtle difference between these three. So these three are the major steps. This is where the success of the model relates not based on your accuracy of the model is not based on the model the way in which you do these all data cleaning data pre-processing data transmission so this is what the expert suggest and recommend every data science enthusiast 
to become strong enough good enough so 70% of the time or your intellect should be expertise on these three 30% of the time only you should be spending on model once your data is good enough model definitely will respond you every model building you will be spending only 30% this 30% also i can say you can work on only 15% the remaining 15% you need to spend on model improvement your effort should go on understanding and becoming mastery on model improvement technique every model has its own improvement this is not a common this is different this also there is no thumb rule there are several models plenty of models hybrid model ensemble model stand alone model stochastic model statistical model so many plenty of models available so we need to distribute our intellect or knowledge expertise in this manner 70% you should be expertise on these three steps data cleaning data pre processing data transmission 15% you should be good enough with the model building 15% you should be with the good enough uh, model improvement only then you are said to be a data scientist so this is a thumb rule to announce or to declare that you are the data scientist otherwise you need to empower yourself that is the only message i want to convey so from this moment onwards let us step into one by one with the same uh, background of a split i want you to take towards each and every model as per your stipulated syllabus beyond that if you want to learn i have contributed lot of uh, videos uh, in many faculty development workshops related to several models imbalanced data set so many other models if you wish you can watch those all now coming to this numerical prediction categorical prediction or label prediction so there are two predictions this is called linear regression famous popular this is logistic regression so many regression people uses that is uh, sorry so many models so let it be now coming to here again i'll give you authentically i'm saying based on all the industry benchmarking report only i'm saying 70% of the time industry uses for the business point of view because you are working on business analytics you should be aware of it 70% of the time running the business depends on classification model label prediction class prediction so this is what a report says 30% of the time industry uses numerical prediction it doesn't mean that numerical prediction is not at all worth enough the situation the circumstances or the business scenario the context suits 30% towards numerical prediction 70% towards label prediction or classification <laughs> so this is what the industry report says these are all a fair idea you should have what is going in the industry side that is there is business analytics optimally suitable for industrial perspective not even research perspective not even uh, academic perspective this is purely for industrial solution or e-commerce solution now let us step into these are all a warm up a fair idea you should be aware of what is happening in and around you now let us step into data modeling stages data whenever you are working with the machine learning 100% i can say if not 90% of the time you will be working on structured data machine learning is meant for structured data whereas deep learning is meant for both structured data also unstructured data so this is the major difference you should know when to use which or interview point of view you should know when to use which deep learning is highly related to unstructured doesn't mean that it won't work for structured data it suits fit enough for both structured data and unstructured data deep learning this is the major difference second difference machine learning is fully working based on statistics and probability whereas deep learning works based on statistics and probability however neural network a neuron based neural network based this is a 
main difference the moment neural network architecture plays a role immediately it is termed as deep learning understand so deep learning when to touch upon whenever unstructured data if you get a image video audio signal all those kind of our mixed data are these all the type of data comes into the picture deep learning deep learning will work for structured as well as unstructured it is useful for time series data as well so that is powerful that i agree but the moment unstructured comes into the nature only deep learning we need to prefer that is where the machine learning stops its limitation there are three differences i was telling understand number one suitable for structured data it works on statistics probability number two here it's suitable for both structured and unstructured it is working based on statistics probability however neural network concept should play a role third when you need to prefer this and this third point two points i have covered now third point when the data becomes big data zettabyte petabyte or it is voluminous data size is too huge then machine learning will perform very poorly data is huge then your approach should be only with the deep learning huge data deep learning is hungry of data it will eat enormous data towards the training period so these are all the three scenarios you should understand technically when to use machine learning when to use deep learning that's fine so now let us move on to the topic of discussion again whenever i say data modeling in your perspective i mean to say only structured data because this subject is to the scope of first unit is towards descriptive analytics second and third unit is towards predictive analytics fourth and fifth unit is towards prescriptive analytics you are having all the three analytics except diagnostic analytics there is no exclusive diagnostic analytics all combinedly we may need to use at time or we may need to little bit deviate towards diagnostic analytics as per gartner report you need to be aware of what is gartner report this is a famous report they will predict the technology revolution and what will happen towards technology in the next 5 year next one decade so entire globe is watching only the gartner report entire globe industrialist even academicians we need to refer this in order to set the curriculum we need to keep up the momentum we need to set our career path so as per gartner report you have four analytics descriptive analytics diagnostic analytics these two are related to past history what happened monumental data historical data upon the historical data what you want to do that is called uh, descriptive analytics diagnostic analytics predictive analytics this is for present or forecasting present and future this is related to present and future i can say p and f whereas the predictive anal prescriptive analytics is meant for only the future this is meant for this is the way this is historical monumental data past history this works on past so these are all the way analytics works almost you have all the four types of analytics glimpse in your syllabus it doesn't mean that your syllabus is the limit however this is a good start to dive into this kind of technological aspect let us move back what is structured data anything which you see in the form of excel csv sql data json javascript object notation bson binary javascript object notation bson key value pair xml this these two are data exchange format across the web json is for exchanging any data whereas xml is to exchange a document across the web document exchange document structure exchange so if these two formats are not available there is no exchange happens across the web so these uh, two only predominantly used across the web for data exchange from one location to another location or one ip address to another ip address or one device to the web web to the device vice versa anything then text file text file is also can be treated as structured data so this is the fair idea you should have where the data comes 
so if you are into web analytics or sentiment uh, data analysis then naturally you will be having these kind of format json format web uh, web document analysis then you must be having text uh, this xml data now let us move on what you should do the moment you get the data maybe primary data or maybe secondary data whatsoever may be what you supposed to do you need to verify uh, data missing technically rows are called instances observation or record all the four words are interchangeably used 1 2 3 4 you should be aware of this all the four terminologies similarly for the column what you will use see columns are always said to be variable in general among given number of columns according to the problem statement and the context you need to identify dependent variable and independent variable independent variable otherwise called x variable otherwise called parameter otherwise called features otherwise called predictor variable dependent variable otherwise called y variable response variable you should be aware of this all the terminologies every textbook or every author tend to use different terminologies so you should be comfortable in reading so this is very basic uh, buzzword or terminologies you should be aware of coping up with uh, any kind of data science textbooks or materials now your primary duty should be handling missing value how to handle missing value i slightly postpone uh, maybe 10 minutes then i will touch upon one by one this is your primary concern next data consistency what is there are several meaning for the data consistency it is again you can explore a lot in it but i'll give you a glimpse for you what is data consistency for example you may run a business row number 1 row number 2 there are 100 customer let's say for example today 100 customer purchased in your e-commerce business website so all of a sudden you can notice here 500 rupees may be the customer purchase and 5000 may be customer purchase let us say for example 100 rupees to 10000 rupees the trend of the purchase all of a sudden let us imagine zero purchase happened all of a sudden let us imagine one crore purchase happened something fishy don't you agree so one crore purchase happened or one lakh purchase happened something like that something fishy thing is going on in your website you need to verify this how come purchase zero paise delivered the product or shipment started how it is possible without uh, paying uh, this much uh, big uh, Uh, amount how you can do that where the data loss is happening or any intruder has come or any representation is going wrong software is going wrong all those things you need to verify so these kind of extremities your sale value all all the day your sale range goes from 100 to 10000 range let us say for example but all of a sudden it happens 0 rupees or minus 10 rupees something like that then here it goes 1 lakh 2 lakhs so 2 crores something like that imagine two different extremes so there is no consistency in it why it is supposed to be that you need to verify similarly duplication record if it exist that also you need to remove never you need to push the data set with duplication exactly same two records or multiple records you should not give it to the model that will mislead so these all two example i would like to quote for data consistency beyond that there are many more you can explore next dummy variable label encoding one hot encoding there are several encoding techniques available that is apart this alone you can explore you can come out with a good paper several encoding techniques are there what is all about this encoding if you look at any formula linear regression anything beat any model underneath statistics and probability only works so especially linear regression this is underlying point logistic regression and linear regression for both of the regression model it is mandatory why it is mandatory if you look at the formula given for linear regression and logistic regression both are lr only the formula will take place y is equal to mx plus c in both it is available 
y is equal to mx plus c for the linear regression whereas for the logistic regression y is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus e power y e power minus y e power minus y the same you substitute mx plus c this is the formula if you look at the independent variable may be in any combination numerical or categorical or string data type or text anything can be so this supposed to be converted into numerical value only then the formula can work on this formula cannot accept m tech business analytics not at all possible you can't pass the string as input to this formula so that you need to convert this categorical nature of variable which one will become categorical imagine gender male female other gender so nowadays application comes with three gender so this male female may be in text also doesn't matter full or short form whatever so this cannot be substituted through this formula we need to transform this into dummy variable or label encoding so there are several encoding techniques please explore i am just giving you a glimpse of these two frequency count encoding several plenty means plenty of uh, uh, encoding techniques are available so that this need to be transformed into numerical value male i can say one female i can say two other gender i can say three anything like that somehow i need to convert this into frequency count is also available more frequency goes to male all the male i can represent with the frequency value understand i am going to replace this by frequency value 300 300 all the male i am going to replace it by 300 that is frequency counter there are several techniques i said no like that somehow you need to convert this into numerical even you can invent a new coding encoding technique that is also possible that will become a breakthrough so yeah all the co encoding technique you can verify and you can come out with uh, maybe 10 encoding technique let us say for example it is existing so you can uh, invent a new encoding technique you can take one full data set and you can apply these all and you can compare the uh, accuracy value or loss function or both then what is your invention this you compare if more or less it performs well with the existing good enough to publish it to the world a new encoding technique you can come out a breakthrough you can do so this is what label encoding why we supposed to do when we supposed to do you should have clarity yeah next coming to that next stage you need to be in the position to explore given the data set given the variables or columns you need to identify which are or your independent variable which is your dependent variable that should be your primary motto next you you supposed to do all the necessary descriptive analytics this is the analytics will help you for the predictive model building please be uh, clear so we need this is where that 70 percent i said now that 70 percent only i'm discussing what are all you need to do here only model building starts so till here that 70 percent of knowledge only i'm trying to put forth so first you need to understand what are all your independent variable what is your dependent variable this clarity you should have once if you have that fair idea you need to go for descriptive analysis especially for the linear regression lot of preconditions assumptions or preconditions they used to say this is the one complex model rather i can say because this is the only model has lot of preconditions than any other model in the machine learning this is the only model has assumptions either, either word you can see in the textbook so one such precondition is normal distribution linear regression will work when all your variables are normally distributed both independent and dependent if it is numerical continuous variable not for categorical only for continuous variable it should be normally distributed 
this is a primary check so all the numerical variables you need to verify numeric normally distributed or not there are several methods available one is graphical distribution nearby histogram plot or scatter plot nearby distribution exist then you can say it is normally distributed next that you can do with the kurtasis kurtasis check there is a direct function available for the normality check so using that you need to verify uh, sum of whether the numerical column or variable is normally distributed or not the next if not more than 600 plus technique to my knowledge only i'm telling you need to apply you need to bring it back to the normal distribution before building the model please be very clear so be, before building the model you need to bring it to the uh, normal distribution so what are all the way available to bring the famous or popular whatever i know whatever i have applied the, that alone i am going to tell log you can apply for the variable so that logarithmic value 0 to 1 it will fit in why it is normally distributed why we need to do that question also you should know why we need to do is yes, for example salary of or family income of a student or salary of employee anything you take when you consider there would be only one person drawing the salary of 5 lakhs per month within the institution also there are people available getting this perk so within the same institution there would be 20000 salaried employee now if you start plotting now this will pull the attention of the model towards it or this will mislead our prediction so all the data need to be brought normalized into the scale 0 to 1 so this is called normalization in order to avoid the wide range between more and more the range then mean value will become lesser so this all will lead to uh, biases model cannot be reliable model is not reliable we need to build a reliable model in order to build a reliable model only we are going for normality check so this normality check what you supposed to do is you can apply log transformation that will convert 0 to 1 or you can apply z score transformation or you can apply the min max transformation these are all mathematical point of view i am telling if you look at python point of view inbuilt lot of packages are available for this transformation popular transformation packages means uh, functions are scalar standardized scalar transformation standardized scalar transformation robust scalar transformation these are all widely used there are several available similarly python and also several functions available for the normal normalizing for the normalization you are checking for normality if not what are you supposed to do if it is a more or less normal distributed you are lucky enough if it is normally not at all fit enough to the normal distribution curve skewed highly skewed or highly scattered what you can do you need to bring back to the normality in order to bring back to the normality only i am speaking about mathematically 600 plus phase to transform quadratic transform exponential transform cubic transform so inverse log transforms the several ways of transformation popular famous uh, mathematical wide i am telling similarly python perspective python packages perspective standard scalar transformation robust scalar transformation so these are all the transformation all also you can apply what is the meaning all you can apply one model one technique of normality you apply verify whether it is normally distributed or not if it is normally distributed you are lucky again you can proceed with model building if not you need to change the model one by one if you know scientifically what is the meaning of this distribution and what is the meaning of this distribution what is the meaning of this how you can bring this distribution to this distribution if you know that is fantastic if you don't know you need to go for trial and error method until your variables are normally distributed more or less this is what the science behind of normality check significant variables uh, uh, now uh, this uh, point i will touch upon later now correlation check you need to do correlation check among 
independent variables iv to iv you need to do this iv to iv check is called multicollinearity check i will come later iv to dv you need to do since it is a linear model linear regression understand the word word model itself linear regression that means highly it should be correlated independent variable dependent variable it should become correlated every variable should have some amount of correlation if it is towards zero there is no use negative correlation is fine but towards zero there is no use so depending upon this independent variable dependent variable correlation analysis also you can identify useless variables insignificant variables those all you can drop you can throw it out so that is the message through independent variable to dependent variable independent variable to independent variable you supposed to do for multicollinearity check what is the meaning of multicollinearity check for example i am having salary i am having age i am having one more uh, for example i am having uh, uh, age salary uh, something like that uh, years of experience so like that three variable i am having if i start finding the correlation between two different variable if it has more or less one then you need to check with this variable to the dependent variable and this to dependent variable if both relates to 0.9 and above exactly i mean to say please understand 0.9 and above then it will create inflation it will create disturbance two variables are trying to explain each other to the dependent variable so that leads to lot of inflation in the prediction so what you supposed to do is again you need to identify which variable to be retain so for that variable inflation factor vaf this is a method available identify the significant variable when the multicollinearity exist if not if you are not comfortable with vaf don't worry through simple correlation pairs and correlation you understood that there is existence of multicollinearity then what you supposed to do retain this variable and build the model throw this variable then retain this variable remove this mod, uh, variable and build the model you can retain all the both of the variables and build the model definitely this won't uh, work well but the, there are three trials you can do which model it gives better r square r accuracy and lesser loss function rmsc linear regression loss function calculation is purely based on rmsc accuracy is purely based on r square so widely popular uh, use for the numerical prediction itself i can address the way of calculating loss function it has more than 8 almost i can say 8 8 different ways of available ways available to calculate the loss function so which one you use is the matter why your popular thing is used is this there are much more better than this uh, loss function available to predict so what you supposed to do you need to verify which one is having lesser loss function which one is having better accuracy next question there is understand carefully there is no relationship between loss and accuracy understand no relationship exist it should become minimal near zero it should become maximum near one if both exist in your model you are the best so you are done the best job that is indication for hackathon also they will take this kind of measures okay next removal of unwanted column this is very big challenge this is again ocean so these are all not ocean this is ocean what is the removal of unwanted column one way i said now 
independent variable dependent variable you plot when it is point 1 correlation or point correlation you have many number of variables many means maybe more than 6 7 8 variables if you are having one such variable or couple of variable happen to become like this you can throw this is a straight forward method or else what are all other ways to do this is based on correlation one is based on correlation another one is based on your intuitive idea what is intuitive idea you know what is your business domain you know about each variable what that signifies what is the relevance between your problem statement or the context and you need to connect or you need to think all together and you need to take decision that is called intuitive based that is one way of another way of doing second way of doing if not what are all the other way one is feature engineering the next feature engineering is a art it is an art it is not the science you must have you need to acquire the skill over the period or you need to expose to different types of problem only then you can get this knowledge you can be commendable what is that feature engineering one example i'll tell you for example you are running a e-commerce uh, platform or a sale platform second and house platform house sale so buyer and seller both are coming and registering subscribing to you this fellow will come and deposit his data this fellow will watch and purchase from you you will like a, you will be like a e broker electronic broker in that case for the customer point of view this is customer this is a sell buyer uh, this is what seller this is seller this is customer or buyer imagine for the human you need to give all the detail for example first floor you may have two three floors let us imagine second floor third floor so third floor you would have built only one small room 10 cross 10 100 square feet rest all may be free second floor you would have built only two bedrooms whereas first floor may be having 1000 to 2000 square feet let us say for example these all the micro level detail you supposed to give it to your customer they need to feel and understand your house you can give a picture also you need to give quantitatively also that is fine but for machine if you give this all information like this detail it will be confused you will be pulling down your accuracy Mo model will go erratic model will not be stable so you need to convert it into two column one is total square feet area total area built up area understand so human point of view they need to reveal all such information so just because of the availability if you pull and directly if you build the model model will go mad so you need to do feature engineering machine need to understand there are total square feet this much the total built up area is this much what is the relationship the linear relationship influences the prediction fixing the price of the house this is the famous problem cost and price prediction model so this is one of the kaggle competition and everywhere this is popular uh, uh, data set many worked on it so when it comes this kind of data set you need to transform this is called feature engineering there is no science so this is the way you can work on hope so you will be understanding this what i mean to say here subsequently okay dimensionality reduction this is science you have several plenty of techniques for the dimensionality reduction lean several popular only i am telling linearity linear dimensionality reduction pca linear dimensionality reduction lda linear discriminant analysis principal component analysis the modern method or 
non linear dimensional reduction 2008 only they have invented these all old maybe 3 decade i'm i'm assuming maybe more than also 3 decade before itself these are all used tsne this is non linearity model it works better for most of the situations so these are all the dimensional reduction technique you can apply or else you can go for feature selection technique so what are all the feature selection technique you can use gel to regularization loss or regularization for the feature selection random forest for the best feature selection or any other optimizing methods optimization algorithms for the feature selection methods so there are several techniques available i'm just giving you clue so or you can work on data working range this i will touch upon later next data transformation so this or dimensional reduction is one of the transformation or you can think of any other transformation technique outlier influencing point reduction and removal this is what look at here there is a word multicollinearity significant variable becomes insignificant that is why i said you need to throw one variable at a time that explains a lot just because of that you can't retain for this multicollinearity what i can say is one of the Uh, story I used to say in all my session. See, for example, I am going to one of my friend house. They are giving ginger tea. Another house they are giving green tea. Another house they are giving clove tea. So clove flavor, ginger flavor, and green tea flavor. I I liked it everywhere. I uh, liked, I enjoyed the tea. Just because of all the three are good. If I mix all the three, what will happen? Vomiting only will happen. That's all. so each and every flavor lemon tea one more tea i am having lemon tea just because of that if i mix all the tea vomiting only will happen nothing more will happen so it is like that you cannot mix all the variable although it explains better you need to retain the most influencing variable rest all you need to throw away that is called insignificant variable becomes insignificant that is the story behind it now coming back to this outlier influencing point that is extremity for example in our institution all the students belong to rich category poor category or middle class category whatever all of us i am going to uh, get admission or uh, some of ambani family member is joining imagine ambani son is joining in our college as a student what will happen he is one of the notable notorious uh, uh, wealthy person across india so what will happen his family income based on income i want to give you a scholarship so this one data will sit here and pull everybody's data so none of you guys will become eligible for a scholarship so just because of one vvip person or richest person if i bring what will happen so this income family income will lead all the members pull towards this then none of you guys will get scholarship so that is a message i want to convey so all the outlier extremities i can say extremities that need to be eliminated so that is called outlier or influencing pointed uh, removal now coming to data split you need to go for row split column split so what is column split x train y train x test y test you need to bring into these two variables for training this is dependent independent variable this is dependent variable these two for testing this is independent variable this is dependent variable then row wise split 70 30 is a common quite commonly used uh, split rule for the row split 75 25 80 20 90 10 when you need to use these two when you are number of records are lesser then you can't go for this split you need to go for this when your number of records are too much here, larger in size number of rows i mean to say then you can prefer this method so that is the meaning when it comes data modeling full of mathematics you should be aware of statistics probability linear algebra differential calculus these are all the four math predominantly required maybe some other aspects that is not uh, so much important coding you must prefer more or less your uh, james sivan book is related to excel that is fantastic for academic point of view you can start with excel 
but for coding point of view still excel seems to be powerful but uh, you should have the expertise on it otherwise you need to go for python sas r julia java or matlab even matlab supports a uh, popular language as per the polling conducted across the industry by the kd nuggets so for the past 3 years for the machine learning python seems to be the top uh, language for uh, machine learning and deep learning that is a declaration uh, this is the survey conducted by kd nuggets so this uh, you can find it on the internet also next once if you have built the model you need to validate your model how far your model is good you need to validate on both end accuracy perspective loss perspective both if you do only it is reliable understand even much more better what i say is cross validation this has biggest science in it cross validation why it is important let us touch upon later if time permits then if that model doesn't perform better you need to go for model tuning the same model have certain hyper parameters whatever the parameters are changeable in not adjustable those all are called hyper parameters you need to go for hyper parameter tuning or any other technique maybe any other technique after this hyper parameter tuning you need to go for revalidation so this is how you need to end for a single model i mean to say single model if it is not performing after all these three steps no other go you need to change the model that is where several data model comes into picture now what are all the way hyper parameter or what are all the way model tuning is possible increase the quality of the model six ways one is check the quality of your data go back you, i am asking you to go back to the beginning compare different algorithm quantify error random error where the error what is the cause for the error it is possible to identify recent day it is explainable ai nowadays every part we can synthesize well, normally people used to do bringing the model fitting the model setting the model and predicting in between nothing they know what are all the meta learning is happening what are all the parameters are learned in between they don't look at anything this becomes black box only five line code with the five line code they will complete with accuracy loss function so you can capture the cause for error pattern of that error residual plot so many research you can do so this is another way then if there is any hyper parameters in it you can tune it scale your data what is the meaning of scale your data you need to bring it to normal normality or you need to scale up or you need to scale down scale your data or increase your data reduce your data that uh, the number of record considered you need to work on it dimensional reduction technique so these are all the uh, straight forward method maybe many more also available upon expertise upon consistent uh, working on the data set one may acquire not by theoretically people can acquire that's all as a sum up i mean to say first you should have domain or business intelligence in and out that is where you can be successful with the model or accuracy or anything next you need to understand the business scenario context challenge perception of a disequilibrium what is disequilibrium all of a sudden your sales is going uh, poor worst condition or uh, going down slowing down you need to identify that is called disequilibrium you need to identify is your competitor price is lesser or your customer satisfaction is not good or your customer care wing is not working good or your quality of the product is going down what is the cause you need to identify that is called disequilibrium so next you need to go for problem statement variability the expectations from each stakeholder will vary from person to person that is called variability for same problem statement everyone will tend to think differently everyone will tend to give solution or uh, perspectives differently so that you need to consider data data is ready to speak with you are you ready to listen so here yeah, descriptive analysis pre processing understanding of the data is essential than your model knowledge 
so how far you are good about your data is what the first question next model or algorithm understanding in and out of the model and algorithm you should be good enough with this mathematics you should be good enough in any one of the language you should be good enough in dealing with the data pre processing data cleaning exploratory analysis descriptive analysis you should be in the position to do data wrangling or data monging or feature engineering dimensional reduction when it is applicable Num dimensional reduction is applicable only for column understand not for row row you need to throw away some record uh, selectively or uh, unconsciously or whatever uh, randomly also randomly or uh, selectively you can throw next model building validation matrices you should know model improvement technique revalidation technique you should know if nothing works perfect then you need to change the model then results and interpretation is much more essential every model in and out you should be in the position to articulate the story in terms of oral or in terms of writing journal so then you need to give the recommended option upon the results and interpretation business point of view you need to put forth and translate what and all you did why you did that is not a story how the business need to take it forward what need to be done next what next is a answer you need to give what best you need to give answer for what best what next nobody in the business domain business world ready to listen your stories your knowledge they want the action what next action you are recommending for them what next best solution you want you are ready to give to them that is what their expectation finally you should to put it in the business language not in the scientific language so that is called business analytics with that point today let me stop tomorrow let us start with dealing with missing value